Welcome back to the garage. Today, we're talking about fuel pressure regulators, how this thing works and how to plummet. Hey, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm putting out how-to videos for the weekend mechanic and digging into the EFI tech for the classic car community. Now, my current setup, I've been running a Fitec EFI for about the last two, three years, and I've loved it, it's worked great, but it recently got to the point where I no longer was able to run it, the handheld controller went out, and Fitec asked me to send it back so they could take a look at it, which is great. But, I also then had an Edelbrock ProFlow uh, fuel rail system, and so I thought, well, why don't I just take the Fitec off and install the Edelbrock ProFlow? So I'm working on that right now. I'm, I'm putting on the Edelbrock ProFlow. It's going great, but one of the things that they required was a fuel regulator. So yesterday I went out and got this one. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get one uh, as well from like Amazon or anything like that. I didn't really know that I needed one of these, so instead of ordering one online, I just ran to uh, Tennessee Speed Sports up in Nashville and picked this one up. Now, if you are going to get one of these, I highly recommend that you stick with a Holly or Edelbrock or a trusted automotive name. Like, don't just buy the cheap Chinese knockoff version that's like 20 bucks on Amazon um, because you just don't want to mess with your fuel. So make sure to get a good quality one. I trust Holly. I trust the Edelbrock system. Um, where I went didn't have one of the Edelbrock ones or else I would have just gotten that to keep with the whole Edelbrock system, but um, they didn't have it at the place that I went. So when I installed my Fitec, I put on there the Fitec fuel pump, which was it's rated for like 90 PSI. And how the Fitec works is it's different uh, setup than the Edelbrock ProFlow with the fuel rails, which the Edelbrock ProFlow, they want about 43 PSI for my system. Some systems go up to like 58 PSI. So that's where they want you to put a fuel regulator on there. Now, the reason that I'm not just going out and buying another fuel pump or something like that, because these are can get pretty expensive, is I want to be able to try different fuel pumps. Like I have my inline fuel pump right now, which I'm gonna replace, and I already have an in-tank fuel pump that is also rated for a higher PSI than the Edelbrock ProFlow. So that's why I'm going with one of these. And this thing's pretty cool because if I ever wanted to switch back to my carburetor uh, and I didn't want to then put on the mechanical fuel pump and do all that kind of stuff, I could just dial this down to the appropriate PSI for my carburetor. Now, when you're looking at a fuel pressure regulator, there are a few things that differentiate them. One, is carbureted versus EFI. And the main thing with that is this spring right here. So this is the EFI spring. It's pretty tough and the carbureted spring has come already installed in this. So I'm gonna swap this out, put the EFI spring in there. Um, and basically what that is gonna do is, you know, this will regulate the fuel pressure based on vacuum coming out of your engine. And so, you know, having a stiffer spring for EFI because you got a higher PSI because you're dealing with more pressure versus a lower uh, softer spring with a carbureted system because you're dealing with a lot less pressure and the changes uh, are easier to make and that kind of thing. So uh, the springs make a difference. So make sure if you are buying one of these, you get an EFI system versus a carbureted system if you're running an EFI like I am. The other thing you'll notice is this one has two 
ports on the side and one on the bottom. So this is actually a bypass regulator. Now a normal regulator would just have one inlet and one return line. Now the reason for this is, you know, your fuel system is pressurized. So there's pressure in the system and this is regulating the pressure. So when the pressure gets beyond the amount that you need, then it lets it out of the return line and it goes back to the fuel tank or it allows your fuel system to build up pressure uh, to get the most out of your fuel injectors. Now, the reason that this one is a bypass system is because it's actually allowing the fuel to go through the system and anything that is left over then is coming out and going to the return line. So this can be used as a regular uh, fuel pressure regulator but you can't use a regular fuel pressure regulator as a bypass regulator. So I'll get into that a little bit more in a second, but just keep in mind that's the difference in this one versus a regular one with just the two ports. Now the other thing uh, that you know you notice with these is just the port size. Um, I got one that is all 6AN uh, ports, so you know all my hose is 6AN, so uh, that is just another thing to keep in mind when you're when you're purchasing one of these. So now, where do you actually put this on the engine? All right, so that gets super complex. <laughs> let me let me see if I can draw it out. All right, I'm gonna try to do my best engineering explained version of this. So in this first example, we have our fuel tank and the fuel comes out of the fuel tank to the pump, pumps it into the fuel rail, around the fuel rails, and then the fuel pressure regulator uh, then stops the fuel pressure, but then has a return line out. So this is probably the most normal way to set up this fuel pressure regulator within your system because what you're doing here is the fuel pressure regulator is actually managing the pressure from the fuel pressure regulator back to the pump in this situation. So here you wouldn't want to put the fuel pressure regulator here like it is in this example because what this is doing is it is keeping pressure in your fuel rails. Now your whole fuel system is pressurized, so that's why this is key. Now a lot of current cars run this way, a lot of our normal uh, everyday vehicles are not a lot of classic cars obviously because they're carbureted and then especially if you're adding an EFI to it, a lot of times um, this is not how the system is. With my Phytech, the Phytech regulated the fuel pressure um, and I didn't have fuel rails so it was just throttle body right there and there was no fuel pressure regulator. Um, now this second system is what I was talking about um, which doesn't really work great when you have the fuel tank going to the fuel pump, going to the fuel pressure regulator going to the fuel rail and then out of the fuel rail is the return line. Like this is the bad way of doing this because basically then your fuel pressure regulator is only regulating the pressure in this line right here because it's still letting all the fuel go, go out and what's happening is the fuel rail then is your return which then doesn't create that that pressure that it's just going to keep cycling and the fuel is just going to keep running through so in the third example down here this is the way that i'm going to run my system and this is the way that you want to run yours if you are switching from phytech to edelbrock or, or something similar like that. So we have our fuel tank and it goes to our fuel pump and then it goes to our fuel pressure regulator like in this, this one up here, but out of the fuel pressure regulator is our return line that goes to the fuel pump. So what that's doing is this fuel pressure regulator then is regulating the fuel in this line, but it's also regulating the fuel in the fuel rail right here because 
the fuel rail stops. Like that's the key. If this fuel rail was still open and had a return line to the fuel tank, then you wouldn't get the pressure buildup that you want. And what's happening in this system is my pump is at 90 PSI. I need 50 or 43 PSI in my fuel rail. So what's happening is this fuel pressure regulator then is dumping off the extra fuel and just sending it back to the tank, but keeping a solid 43 PSI in my fuel rails. So that's why my fuel pressure regulator is that bypass system because it's going through to the fuel rail. Like normally you would cut off, you know, one of the inlet outlet ports and it would just stop after the fuel rail and it would keep that pressure in the fuel rail and keep it at the right PSI and anything extra it would just dump down. But also this is a way that you could get more pressure into your fuel rails out of your fuel pump uh, is by doing this and I think that's what a lot of hot rod guys do is they will push more pressure into their injectors hoping that you know they'll get more more kind of boost out of it, whatever. Don't quote me on it, but <laughs> that's in my mind how I understand it. The last thing that I want to talk about is this, this little uh, breather nipple thing here going on at the top. So this is a super important thing, and I talked about the spring inside of here earlier. There's one for the carburetor and one for the EFI. Now the reason that there's that spring in there is because when you open up the throttle and you step on the gas, then this is gonna allow more fuel to flow through there. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought this was a regulator, like it kept the right amount. Well, what it's doing is it is reading the manifold pressure and it's saying, oh, hey, there's an extra 20 PSI of manifold pressure, so we need to bump up our 43 PSI to 63 PSI to match the manifold pressure. Now that's way high for manifold pressure, but um, but that's kind of what how this system is working is it's utilizing this uh, manifold pressure to regulate then within even more the, man, the, the fuel pressure. So this is my Fitec EFI. This is a throttle body EFI system. Now, a lot of, you know, there's the Holly Sniper. There's a lot of these out there. But the thing with these is inside of here, you can see the fuel actually squirts above the, the butterflies that open and close that allow air in. So what's happening is the fuel is squirting in and mixing with the air and then being sucked into the manifold. So if you are running something like this where your fuel injector is above your throttle butterflies, then you do not want to hook up your fuel pressure regulator to manifold pressure. Then uh, in this case, you would just leave it open and allow the air to dictate, you know, if it changes or anything like that. Now with my Phytec, my Phytec was a system that it just looped through. The fuel was constantly looping and the Phytec was pulling that fuel that was looping and putting it in the injectors. And so that's why it was at 90 PSI because, or whatever it is, I, f I forget what exactly it is, but it's because it was just constantly looping through. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. That's a lot of information, but the things to remember is uh, look if you need a bypass regulator or a normal regulator. Look and make sure that you get one that's EFI or carbureted or my, like mine that can do both. Um, make sure that you get it with the right fittings. Make sure that you are using that manifold pressure on the fuel pressure regulator if you need it and make sure that you set it up in the right way um, for your system. Now, again, mine, even though it's a bypass system, it could go on that top one that I was talking about um, that most normal vehicles are set up for. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna install this thing and fire up the Edelbrock. I'll see you guys next time.